If it's impossible for an independent company to replicate an existing service or product, it creates potential for consumers to be abused or offered a second-rate product indefinitely. TLDR, never let business be immune to replication. This is why every single service or product on this thumbnail have had awful reps from their consumers for years, yet haven't changed nor been replaced. Because if you earn extra abusing your consumers, a new company can just not and still make bank taking all your customers, unless it's impossible. This is how we made it impossible for new companies to appear for each of these services. For insulin, it's patents. Three companies each have active patents that cover one or two of the four known types of modern insulin essential for type 1 diabetes, and it doesn't get any more impossible to replicate than literally a and while original patents have expired, new patents that cover new formulations and advancements have had so little difference with the original that replicators of the original are still liable for patent infringement. Which you can tell because companies trying to make their own insulin like the Open Insulin Project and Lynette are specifically trying to make and approve a biosimilar, not a bioreplicate, a generic, which is easier to get approved. Until we make one, the big three price fix and there are big million view videos showing the patents, companies and price fixing they're involved in, but none mentioned price fixing cartels don't work unless you prevent replication. All you've done is create incentives for new companies and the cartel stops being profitable if you have to invite them all in. Now outside America, government set prices, which works, but it's treating the symptom, not the cause. This ain't isolated. Printers, with 8 million views worth of complaints about insane ink markups, chips that waste ink by design and countless others, everyone knows this one. They say it's due to the razor and blades model, but racists don't have this abuse. In truth, modern inkjet printers have four essential parts and each is patented by a different company. Used to be a ton of companies trying to invent it and patenting each part as they went, but these four made the essentials, so they shared them. But only with each other. It's a cartel, same as insulin. IE did a report on the details, but this is why you can't find inkjet printers from anyone other than Canon, Epson, HP, or Brother. Try googling it. Even big tech companies like Samsung, despite investing in laser printers, don't make inkjet. In contrast, laser printers didn't have these essentials and could be better replicated. That's why dozens of companies make them and I'm only going to be hating on inkjet printers like this one. Laser printers get a pass. Less potential abuse. Finally, Adobe. Jacking up the price or the slew of new bugs every single major update. It's that you just don't listen. Photoshop was the first of its kind and first to start patenting features, and they've been patenting ever since. Photoshop can select a subject in the foreground with one click. Others do it slower because they can't use this method. It's patented. An image snapping to the center or border of the screen or other image? Patented. Others don't have it. Font matches, the face mesh liquify feature, a bunch of advanced methods for deblurring, all patented. Even things like smart objects and blurring tools like the iris lens that seem like they've been replicated always have a bit less function that they've been missing for years, because legally they have to. All this ensures Photoshop always has more and better features than other graphics programs, but it also forces many customers to more Adobe products to keep production efficient as all their products integrate with each other to save huge time. Pros trying to quit say just that. The way that Adobe's apps dynamically link with each other drastically cuts down on the time that you would otherwise spend saving exporting, editing, and then importing files between your apps. And these are just the easiest cases to show what replication immunity can do. Many companies have thousands of patents. Who knows what other abuses there are that we just don't notice? Apple signed over 2,000 patents in 2018 alone. Do you, do you see a correlation yet? Whatever, next. Streaming services and games platforms like Disney Plus and the Epic Game Store. Infamous for pricing and bad service, but most vexing, one cheap, easy app had its content split onto more services for more money and less convenience. But big food brands don't leave shelves to make their own store. The popular store would just replicate what it lost. Unless you're a restaurant which has to sign an exclusivity deal to buy a drink dispenser because they're fucking patented! And streaming services can't replicate what they lose either. Not because patents, but copyright. The contents are legal to replicate. So when streaming proved successful, Disney tore its copyrighted content from Netflix to sell exclusively on their own because they knew customers couldn't go to the most cheap and convenient service for certain shows or movies anymore. And every service that didn't make its own stuff at the time started buying exclusivity rights to the big shows, games, and movies for the same reason. As a result, anime fans can't watch some shows so they fully air in Japan, you have to wait a needless three months after the Owl House ends on cable to get it on Disney+, Plus. Mulan is behind a double paywall and twice the price of a movie, and why you have to get certain games on subpar services with none of the features. It's all because the product you're offered is not based on what another company can do better, it's based on what consumers will pay to get it at all, because they can't be replicated. Except to some level by piracy, and in 2018 piracy went up for the first time since 2012, oh look at that! But it's not just about streaming, this applies to copyright as a whole. 
Nothing stops adaptions and sequels in high demand cost cutting because they bought the rights and no one else can do it. EA is infamous for games folks want to play but add predatory pricing models they'd never get away with if their games could simply be replicated without it. Nothing stops Nintendo charging for what they didn't before without even getting servers because their games have to be played on their online because no one can replicate their games. Even mismanaged or rushed projects like Game of Thrones get rewarded when a more deserving company never got a chance and why high demand products can take years to get to your video game platform or just never at all. There's no reason to be better. If you haven't guessed, this video is to prove the problem with intellectual property, but this core rule applies to a couple of things outside IP as well. Firstly, everyone hates the USPS. What's impossible to replicate? Budget shipping. Literally a law that bans other deliveries if they're too slow. It's why in the US you can't find non-express couriers. Secondly is companies like Comcast. Same videos, everyone hates cable. In the US, internet companies lay their own cable and you're told there's only one in most areas because they're agreeing to not compete. Big chance for new companies though, where are they? I think local governments try to make it impossible for them by delaying and adding fees to the approval process companies need to go through to use the public land where cable's laid. Because local governments get 5% of the profits from the cable TV that goes across the same lines, they get more of a single company can price gouge. When the federal government asked companies why they weren't laying more cable, they consistently reported excessive fees, rent and crazy delays that burnt money. And until 2018, the FCC said some wanted $1 million in prepaid franchise fees and $13 million wish list. New cable companies had to pay that before laying. Many let government slide because a few are now laying their own cables, but they're only doing this now because internet is important enough to swing elections. This is why when Google said it was going to do its own fiber and told cities to apply, mayors danced because Google was well known and made the news. But Google wasn't the first. Others tried for years. Verizon was doing fiber to the home in 2005. They just couldn't expand without the media push that threatened re-election chances. And when the hype died down, Google fiber died with it. Places like Austin only ever got to 28% coverage with loads of people saying the servers they paid for never came. Google Fiber itself completely giving up on fiber to the home. Not only do mayors always ask the maximum 5% they're allowed, check yourself on your local government website, but they always did exclusive deals when it was legal and they're on record opposing the franchise fee appearing on bills, satellite TV, fixed wireless and 5G, all of which could somewhat replicate cable. These need a line of sight and streaming isn't one to one with cable anyway. But even if it was, cable's internet abuse coincidentally protects cable TV as data caps push people away from streaming and onto money-saving cable bundles to save data. Yes, Spectrum doesn't have data caps, but that was because of a merger deal. They're coming back, don't worry. Anyway, now I've shown the theory elsewhere, let's go next level with copyright. Why have companies like YouTube, Twitch, Reddit, and even I think social media like Twitter and Facebook survived for years without ever being threatened despite countless controversies? You might think it was the size of the community that they couldn't replicate, but Discord beat Skype, so what was it really? What brings people to watch and upload on these sites is the sheer mass of high demand copyrighted content already there. If you had a better Twitch or YouTube, your features would be nothing without replicating all the high demand content, which is technically easy with enough money you just send out bots to rip it, but because of copyright, you'd have to personally get the permission of each creator, so it's practically impossible. This is why piracy sites like the Pirate Bay, Put Locker, and Kiss Anime could gain huge name recognition where legal competitors couldn't. The only thing stopping them growing too much was lawsuits. If these had paywalls, it would be worth it to rip this content too, so you have to wonder what ripping sites would do as a legal entity. And I know, this and everything I said seems really bad for creators. I mean, copyright and intellectual property as a whole does create problems, but it was designed so this couldn't happen, so creators could profit from their hard work. Work. But not only do I believe IP fundamentally creates abuse as I tried to prove in this video, I believe both ethically and practically creators don't need it, which I will argue in the next video. But not just that, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. So you're probably wondering why this whole video is piracy themed. Well, okay. So if you're a mainstay on my channel, you'll know that I'm pro-piracy. But also, you'll know that I've gone from bad jokes to analysis of jokes, to popular videos with jokes, and more recently, I've gone from story analysis to some very popular fan fiction. People keep asking me to become a writer, and with this video, I finally found the right excuse. Do you want to know where I've been all of last year? I've been creating Studio High C and Chapter 1 of my first original webcomic. And that webcomic, and everything that comes out of that studio, is public domain.